Hello again, friends. It's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. And today I wanted to do a little craft along to kind of show you how I set up my bullet journal planner. So this is a new bullet journal that I made myself. Um, it is a ring bound bullet journal and I kind of did it in the junk journal style. So when you go through it, you kind of get the feel of a junk journal because I have some um, old pages in here. I have some collage pages in here. I have some flips. I have all sorts of things, but I also have some what you might consider standard bullet journal pages like these white pages with um, just dots on them for me to write things on and things like that. Um, but I also have like little pages here that have flips in them. And as you saw in the front and now in the back, I have pockets that I can put things in. So I kind of wanted to show you, I mean, this is just a very basic bullet journal for me. Um, but I do need to get some setup going before I really start using it. So I thought we would go through what I do in this bullet journal that's kind of in a junk journal style planner to get it set up and ready to go. So some of the things I'm gonna be doing are creating my index page. And then I might be adding a little bit to some of the other pages in terms of decoration and things like that. I also wanted to show you how to add bookmarks, removable bookmarks or movable bookmarks um, in this planner, maybe some tabs, different things like that. So I went and grabbed some pens, I grabbed some inks, some stamps, some papers, all sorts of things um, to get going. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention before we really get going here is that I also created for myself um, some bullet journal helpers <laughs> because I want to make this easy to use. I don't wanna have to worry about um, setting up every month and writing in all the numbers and you know different things like that. So I created these bullet journal helpers to help me do that. And I wanted to show them to you because I'm also offering them as a freebie. If you enjoy this type of bullet journal setup, you're welcome to go get the freebie. To get the freebie, you just go to madpapercrush.com forward slash bullet journal setup and you just put your email in and you'll be taken to the folder that has all these pages in it. So let me just kind of show you what um, I did. So I have, there's four different pages, I think. Wait, nope, there's three different pages, I lied. Three pages, but each page has two different versions. So one version has a vintage paper in the background if you wanted to print it um, not on white paper. So, you know, in the junk journal style, we think of more things being vintage and things like that. So um, I wanted to have something that was on a vintage paper. But then I also have it printed on, or I'm sorry, saved as a clear background. So you could print it either on white paper, your own tea dyed paper, or like I did here, I printed it on a full sheet clear label paper. Um, because I'll probably be using it that way the most. So this page right here is actually a little page to help you create lists for your bullet journal. So I have some lines here that you could put in someplace if you wanted to have something with lines. I have all these different bullets <laughs> for your list. So I have a little hand here, some scissors, a little um, timepiece clock, pocket watch it looks like and then some hand-drawn circles and squares they look a little wonky which I like and then uh, a little shoe there because who doesn't love vintage shoes so you can use those and I'll show you how I use them when we get going here um, and then I have just some list titles if you wanted to use those so I have to do task goals to da today <laughs> tomorrow remember notes do it this week, random, don't forget, important and grateful. So you can make all sorts of lists with this and this will just help you get those lists going faster so that you don't have to worry about creating them all yourself. So that's one page. And then the next page I have, which I didn't print on the vintage paper, but there is a version of that. So I have, so this, let me sh show you what this is. So when I set up my monthly overview pages, I like to have the month that I'm working in, and then also um, the list of dates, so one through 31, because that's the most that you would get in a month, obviously, and then the days, because I line them up together. And once again, I'll show you how I do this in my bullet journal, um, but I gave you um, running days, 
starting with different days of the week. So uh, once again, I'll show you how I use these, especially, you know, not all months have 31 days. So we'll, you know, we'll work on that when we go through there. But this is the monthly setup and there's a page like this. And once again, I've printed this on a clear label paper. You could print it out. This one is printed out on white paper. This is the same one. But then I do also have this version with the vintage background paper that you could use as well. So that's the second page. And then the third page is just a um, all of the months for 2022. Now, if you're not watching this in 2022, I plan to update this every year. So um, I probably I need to put 2022 on this uh, paper up here <laughs> so that you know what year it is. But this is the 2022 calendar that you can use. And once again, I've printed it out on these this label paper because I thought it would be fun to use this as a sticker somewhere in my bullet journal for the, the month that I have going. And then you could print it out as many times as if you want. If you wanted to add maybe the next month to the previous month, that kind of thing. So this is all for you as well. And once again, I did print it with a vintage background paper. And this one, very light in the back of each one, there's a little coffee stain. So I thought that was a, a fun little addition there. So when you cut this out on the vintage paper, you see that little coffee stain. On the plain paper, I didn't put that because I didn't want that to distract someone from, you know, if they were putting it on a label paper or something like that. So that is the freebie. And once again, you just need to go to madpapercrush.com forward slash bullet journal setup to get this freebie. And I'll show you how I use these in this video. All right, let's get started. The first thing I like to do to set up my bullet journal is to do my index page. If you were along with me when I created this bullet journal, you'll have heard me say how I want my first page to be my index page. So I like to have an index so it's easy for me to find things throughout my um, bullet journal. It really makes it helpful for me, especially if I'm putting down ideas or you know different things that I wanna look back over at a later time. So this first page, here is going to be my index page and I decided to do my index page using these Art Foamies letter stamps. So these are kind of um, vintage. I don't know if it has the name of them on there but I, I will try to link them down below um, the different the, what stamp set this is but I love them because they are um, you'll see when I stamp them but they have like a very vintage look to them when you stamp them. So I'm going to be using them in a little bit of a non-traditional way. So Art Foamies are really cool because they have these little stamp buddies where you load your paint into them. And then once your paint is loaded, you can you know stamp using different colors and things like that. Um, and these hold so much paint that you can paint like forever. <laughs> and since I'm only doing one little page here, I'm not gonna use this because it would be probably a waste of paint unless I was you know um, wanting to write all kinds of things. So I'm not going to use that this time, but I will say I do love it. It works really, really well. So let's pick out my letters and I'm just going to call it what it is. It's an index. So let me see if I can find my letters here. Uh -huh. Okay, I think I got them all. And then I might even use this little swirl. This was in there too, and I just thought that was fun. So we might even use that as well. So I'm going to be using this um, Ranger Distress ink, and this one is Mowed Lawn. It's a green color, but I thought it would look nice kind of with this page um, to, to be a little bit matching. And now I am going to, let's see the best way for me to do this is, I'm going to, because I'm left-handed, so I kind of, I think I'm just gonna kind of turn it this way so that my hand doesn't get um, jammed up in the rings there. But I'm going to take my stamp and I'm gonna make sure I have the right side. So one side has the little um, pits in it that are the vintage. So that's the side that I want to use. The other side is just flat. And I'm gonna load this up with some ink. And hopefully I will get enough on there to create a fun stamp. And it might be a little bit wonky, but I'm okay with that. You know how I like a little bit wonky. So um, I'm just gonna, guesstimate what my you know center might be for this so we'll we'll kind of figure it out so i'm going to hold this oop, straight here hopefully and then i'm just going to kind of press that down and that's perfect so i have a little piece of deli paper here that i'm just kind of cleaning that off with and now let's make sure i can spell correctly <laughs> so next we'll do our n 
And now this one, this, the N is a little bit harder to do only because, you know, it's, uh, it moves in this way. So I want to be really sure I get all of the N covered with my ink first. And then I have to hopefully evenly press down and get a relatively good impression for the N and that looks good too. So I'm just going to keep going in this way and finish up my word index. All right, and one last thing before I put my stamps away, I am gonna put a little swirl on here just because it's fun. And I'm gonna put it down here kind of in the corner. <laughs> I love it. And then the other thing that I might do is I might just kind of flip through here and see if there's any other pages where it might make sense for me to add this little swirl. So I kind of like to have some, um, I don't know what you would call that. When something goes throughout the whole thing, consistency, I don't know, something like that. But I just thought I'd pick a couple pages throughout here that might be fun to have this on. All right, I have some spirals throughout, and now I'm going to add the year to my index. And since I know um, I'm gonna be using it this year, I can put the year in. I'm not gonna put anything else, months or otherwise, because I don't know exactly you know, how long I'll be using this. And actually, I think I'm gonna do it this way. Um, I'm gonna write in 2022 right here, you can see. And I like to, I like to have some handwritten things in. I'm not, you know, a, a brush, lettering artist or anything like that, but I do love um, to letter things. So I just, I have this, um, this is a Tombow Furunosuke, I think, pen. So, and I'm just gonna be uh, making some long twos um, to make my 2022. So I'm just gonna, hopefully I've spread it out, you know, enough that I can fit it all kind of in the same height as my index here, but if not, if it's a little off, that's okay. So I have my 2022 here, and then what I might do, so I'm just gonna try to f try to fix any um, mistakes I made. I'm gonna add just a little bit of um, weight to some parts of it, kind of a faux calligraphy uh, look here. But once again, nothing, nothing real drastic, just some fun, designs. And then to really give it some pop, I'm going to add a little star to the middle of everything. So on my twos, I'm just going to add a little, like an asterisk. So I'm just trying to find the lines that aren't already in that two. And then in my zero, I'm going to do it right in the middle. So that's a fun little fun little addition there. And then I'm gonna make a separating line and I'm gonna do that by doing some asterisks as well. So I'm just gonna start at one side and just very loosely add some asterisks in to separate my sort of title from the rest of the page here. Okay, and since I've put some asterisks up at the top, I think it might be fun to have some down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna add a couple around my little spiral here, just for fun. And there you go. I think my index page is done and ready to go.
Okay, now that our index is done, the next thing that I like to do is number the pages of my bullet journal so that my index is useful. <laughs> so because I created this bullet journal myself, um, there are no page numbers, obviously. I was just picking random papers and putting them throughout my bullet journal here. So I need to add page numbers so that when I put things on my index, I can add a page number and then I can quickly flip to that page to find whatever information that was that I was putting on there. So I'm just going to take a fine tip marker of some sort. I'm going to probably use bat, excuse me, black to make it easier to see. And then I'm going to number my pages. Now, um, there's a couple of things that I do that you can do or not do, depending on what you want to do. Um, I number all of the pages except for my flips. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So like for this page, I want this page to be page numero uno. Now, because this is probably not going to be a page where I put any ideas, this might just be collage, might be art. I don't necessarily have to start with this. And that, that's the great thing about making your own bullet journal is you can make up the rules <laughs> for how you want to do it. So I think I might even just leave that one go because I'm probably not going to be putting any um, earth shattering ideas or information on this one. I'm probably just going to be doing some art on there, maybe some collage. So I'm going to start over here. And it doesn't matter, obviously, where you put your page numbers. Um, if it helps you to be consistent, to put them in the same place, you can do that. I don't necessarily, I, just as long as the page, is, page number is there, that's how I feel the most comfortable. Most of the time, I do like to do it in sort of the lower right-hand corner, but I don't want to mess up any of my art either. So I'm just going to put a very small one here. You could circle it if you wanted to. You could just leave it like that. As long as the page number's on there, you'll know where to find the information later. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on every single page. So two and three. And then I'm going to keep going, four, five, and now I'm going to keep going until I get to a flip out so I can show you what I do there. Okay, it didn't take me too long to get to a flip. So this page, I could number all of these pages if I wanted to, but it might become confusing. So for any pages that I have flips on, I am just going to um, number the page that's anchored to the rings. I'm not going to number my flips. So this is page 14. I'm going to name this 15. So if I have something on this flip that I want to remember later, I will just add it to the index with the number 15, with page number 15. Because as long as I can get to 15, I can find that information that I was looking for. So any flips that you have, um, you don't, I mean, you can number them if you want to, I'm not going to number them. And the, the other thing that this does for me is that it also allows me to add more flips to different pages. So I have a couple of flips in here, but as I go, I may want to add more flips. And if I add more flips, then I don't need to worry about how to fit them into my numbering you know, scheme. So only pages that are anchored to the rings get numbers. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up numbering this, and then we'll start the next step. All right, numbering's done. I got to 116. And believe me, this was not a perfect process. So you just have to decide you know, how you're gonna do it. I think that just having some numbers in as a guideline is helpful. So uh, for instance, this one, this is page 68. This would have been page 69, but because I don't think I'll be writing on this page, I made you know page 69 over here and kept going with 70. Now, another thing that I realized I did, which I haven't done this in a while, I haven't numbered pages in a bullet journal in a while. So I think I must have um, done it many times the same way. I'm trying to find an example here. 97. No, nope, that's not it. I think I did it back here. So I also just wanted to mention like for things like this, I decided to put my number in the corner on the other corner here. So it's kind of, you know, it's not a hard and fast rule where those numbers have to go unless, you know, that kind of thing bothers you. Um, smaller pages, you can see two of the numbers here. <laughs> so, you know, that's how that goes. Oh, here's an example of how I did it. So here was 53. I have a small page. I made that 54. And this page is also busy. So I think I, I skipped 55 because I thought, well, this is page 55 and then made this one 56. <laughs> so, you know, 55 may not end up in my index because it may just be a collage page. 
So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. As long as I can basically find what I'm looking for when I go back later, I'm good. And so most of these pages have numbers and the ones that don't either probably won't end up in the index or if they do, I'll be able to find them based on the other um, page numbers around the page that I'm looking for. So everything is now numbered and we can move on to the next step. All right, now we're going to set up my first sort of monthly overview page. And I'm going to use the freebie that I showed you, the little helpers, bullet journal helpers. So you can see on the page, um, this is the page I used. I started with this page and I've cut it apart by cutting all of the months into strips. And I left them long because on my label paper, if I leave them long, it might be easier for me to pull off the backs, but I'll probably trim them down, you know, as I'm using them. So I have all those cut out and then I've cut all of the days and the dates into long strips like this. So these are all ready to go and I will probably put these um, in an envelope somewhere in my, um, in my bullet journal here so that the next month I can go ahead and pull them out. I usually don't like to work too much ahead of one month just because I never know how much I'm going to be doing during one month. So I kind of like to um, do my new month when I'm getting close to the month, you know, the month end before, if that makes sense. So it's the end of January right now. Um, it might be February 1st by the time this gets posted, but that's when I want to start doing my um, February month. So to do my February month, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I, like I said, I'm going to trim this down so that I have the month ready to go. And I'm not gonna take any of the papers off until I decide kind of where I want to put everything. So what I normally do for the dates and days is I usually put down the days first and then I put um, the, um, the dates first and then the days. I was making sure I said that right. So what I'm gonna do with this strip is first I'm gonna trim this off a little bit and then on the other side, since there's only 28 days in February, I'm just going to cut off the last three um, days there. So I have now the correct number <laughs> of days in my February. And then for my dates, I have to, if I look at my calendar, I'm gonna grab this little calendar here. February this year starts on a Tuesday and ends the 28th on a Monday. So I have to look for the um, strip that starts with a T for Tuesday. Um, now there is um, an, another one that starts with a T for Thursday. So you need to be sure you're you know paying attention to that. But let me just kind of, so if you have all of your strips and this is the first you know month that you're doing it, you can just use the one that starts with Tuesday. And these should line up right next to each other, going all the way down. And then at the end, you can see I can trim off the um, last three days once again so that I have an even number of days on my dates. So I like to do this sort of vertical format so that I can just do a quick overview of things that are going on. So I often will put, you know, birthdays on here if there if I have family members that have birthdays or something that I want to remember or if I have doctor's appointments or um, we're traveling, I'll put those things in there and I'll show you kind of what uh, I mean. I'll get um, one of my months from past to kind of show you what I mean. But to set this up, this is how I would do this. Now, if you didn't, if you had already used Tuesday, so for example, I have um, in the next month, March, it also starts with a Tuesday since February only has 28 days. And the freebie that I gave you only had one thing starting. Actually, I did two. Look at that. I did too because I knew <laughs> February and March started with a Tuesday. But if you didn't have them, you could still use another one of these. So for example, this is the one that starts on Monday. If I just shift it up, so I would trim off the M on the top so that we start on Tuesday, just like we are going to in February. And then I would trim off the bottom two uh, for the end of February. So you can still use some of the other strips for this 
to make it work. And even if you do it as stickers, I mean, you could do this if you were just gluing it down as well. You don't have to use stickers for this. But for example, if I only had, you know, this Thursday left and I wanted to use it, I would just shift it. Oh, that's a Tuesday. I'm sorry. Let me find my Thursday, see if we can make this a little harder. <laughs> okay, so if I only had a Thursday left, and I know February starts on a Tuesday, I could shift this up. So you can see I'm now starting on Tuesday, so I'll have that correct. The rest of my um, days go down here, but then I'm missing two days. So what I would need to do is just cut them off once I cut this off and use the two days that are missing up here and just shift them down to here. So even if you don't have, I tried to, you know, do these strips starting on different days just to make it easier, but you can use them even if, you know, you um, are starting with a month that you don't have the topper. So I just kind of wanted to show you um, how that would work. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make it easy to start with. We're gonna start with one that already has the um, Tuesday on there. And then, as we said, we end on a Monday, so I'm going to trim off the last three days here. And you could even save these to use, you know, on your next month, too, if you wanted to. Or you could just print out another full sheet and go from there, <laughs> however, however you would like to do that. And actually, I'm going to trim off the top here, too just so um, I kind of have things matching. So now let me kind of show you how I put these down. So I'm gonna do my dates first and I'm going to try to do them pretty close to the edge of my paper because I wanna give myself some room, um, you know, to write here. So I'm gonna put these down and I am going to kind of go not quite to the bottom of the page but almost to the bottom of the page. And I love how this sticker makes it so easy. I don't have to figure out if I'm, you know, making things even if I'm just writing, I don't have to, you know, divide the page or any of that stuff. <laughs> so these I think will make it much easier to get a date, um, a month set up. And now I'm going to, this is the one that I had trimmed off for my days. So I know which date goes with which day. And I'm also going to put this, since it's a clear, um, sticker, I'm probably going to put this really, whoops, really close to my dates, maybe even on top just a little bit so that I can, uh oh, I knew this was going to happen, so that I can keep track of my dates. So let me see if I can do this again without getting it stuck <laughs> to the paper until I'm ready. There we go. And if I just burnish it down a little bit with my thumbnail here, I mean, you could even trim off more, you know, you could cut down the side of the, um, the letters or the dates there to kind of uh, make it really tight in here. You can see I have some border on these sides. You could, you know, trim those off for sure if you wanted to as well, if you didn't like how that looks, but I think that works perfectly for me. And then I'm going to put my, um, my date up here. I'm sorry, my month up here. And you can put that wherever you want. So you can put it, you know, on this side, this side, you could put it, I have done lots of different things, put it this way, you could put it down here. If you shift things up, you could kind of do that wherever you want it. So I am going to pull that off. And I think this one I'm going to put on the right hand side, just because, just because. Okay, let me get rid of some of my trash there. So this is the basic monthly setup for that I use for a month. And um, like I said, I will show you what I write here. Okay, here's an old uh, bullet journal from, uh, I don't even know when this was, 2017. <laughs> and um, I wanted to kind of show you how I do my pages, um, the things that I write in there. So this is February from 2017. And you can see that I um, actually had printed these out on the computer. Um, so this whole page I printed out on the computer for February. So I, it's the same thing. I have the dates on here. I put the days next to it, but then I just use it as sort of a monthly overview. So you can see right here, we were traveling to Pittsburgh these days. Um, I have, you know, Valentine's Day here. I, excuse me. I have some things in here for um, my daughter, Ashley. 
we had hockey games that we went to. Ashley was traveling. I wanted to make sure I put that in there and different birthdays and different things like that. So this is a really high level overview of my month and what it looks like. So that's what I'll be doing in here as well. Okay, we have our month set up, but you know, it's looking pretty boring. So we have to do something else <laughs> with it. So the first thing is I wanted to make a gratitude list on the other side um, so that I could, you know, keep a list of all the things that I'm grateful for. I think it's important to do that. Um, it helps you remember all the things that you are actually grateful for. So I cut this one out of this page that I'm going to use for here, and I'm just going to use the, the title. I'm not going to use any of the bullets or anything like that because I just want to be able to write things in. But then I went and grabbed some washi tape. Now you can use whatever size you want. I did grab some smaller ones, um, especially for the, the month side, since there is already a lot going on there. So I, all I'm going to do is, and I love washi tape because it's fast. Cause like I said, I, this needs to be doable for me. And if I am spending a lot of time doing all sorts of, you know, crazy decoration and things like that, I'm not going to use it. And I don't want that. So I want to use it. Um, so I added a, a little line here. And while I'm looking at that, I think it might be fun to add another one down at the bottom. And I don't want to cover up my um, page number there. So I'm just going to Try and keep it right under there, but look how much that does to it already. Just even just adding a little bit like that. And now this page, I had already put some washi tape on the edge, which I love doing because it really adds a little bit to the page itself. You can actually probably see it better here because I think I didn't quite do it in half on there, but I'm still going to um, grab some washi tape to add just as a divider for my, um, my top there. And now this one is a bunch of eyes, and I like that because, well, it's showing that I'm looking at being grateful. <laughs> and I'm not cutting anything or, you know, trying to measure specifically. I'm not even, it doesn't even look like I'm even <laughs> necessarily. But already I'm loving this so much more. So it really makes me want to dive in and use it. The last thing I'm going to do for my monthly setup is add my little month in there. So I probably, um, this is something that like I'll be looking back and forth to. While I love my vertical month overview, it often is helpful for me to see the month as I remember or as I am familiar with it in calendar format. <laughs> so that's why I kind of had these little things too. So when I cut this down, I have a nice little um, calendar that I can look at to say, oh yes, the ninth is a Wednesday <laughs> or whatever I, I'm saying there. So this I will usually put um, somewhere after my month page. So depending on what I'm working on, um, you know, I'm, I don't know exactly where I'll put it, but maybe since I've already got my list started here, I'll put it, I'll put it right here. And this is something that I'll come back to a lot probably. So it'll be nice to just kind of have it someplace um, where I can refer to it when I need to. So I'm going to just kind of, since on the craft paper, you can kind of see the, the adhesive unless you really burnish it down there. But now I have a nice little month that I can refer back to if I want to um, so that I know, you know, what days are on what, what dates are on what days. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Okay, just to get myself started and to add some fun, I'm going to set up kind of what I might do for a day. Um, this will change every day because, you know, depending on what I have going on, what I need to do, what brainstorming things are happening inside of my mind, every day is going to look a little different. So normally I would probably start on just the next page for, you know, um, putting my daily things down. Um, but because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, because that I kind of do in the moment, um, I'm going to turn to one of these collage pages that I have. So you can see there's different blocks of areas where I can write things in. And so I just kind of wanted to show you how we can use some more things on this, the list page here. So I'm going to cut out one of the to-do 
um, titles here. And the other thing I love about clear labels is that you can't see how crooked I cut. And it is, I can guarantee you, it's pretty crooked. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna cut this down really close so that I don't have tape all over the place. But then I can decide if I wanna use um, one of these bullet points. So I have a to-do list here and that makes me you know, wanna check things off. I don't know about you, but I like having um, a checklist a lot of times. It helps me stay on track and get done what I need to do sometimes. So I'm gonna put it on this little uh, mixed media area that I have here. And so you can see now I have my to-do and then I think I'm gonna use these um, round bullets. So I'm just going to kind of measure how many I might go, might fit in this spot. And I'm going to go a little bit shorter than that because depending on what I write, who knows here. Let's see if that's got an easy way out. No, of course not. There we go. So now, I mean, you could certainly write in your own um, circles and check marks and things there. But once again, I love how this just adds to the page and gives me a place right there ready to go for adding, you know, my to-do list things right in here. So that's a whole lot of fun and you can use these and print them out and use them for anything, you know, uh, throughout the entire book. You could even use them, you know, on a bigger page. You could use them, um, you know, on a plain page too. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do do one maybe on here. Let's do the let's do the hands since they're kind of already cut out. And I'm just going to do like maybe um, a partial list here. So I'm going to cut those out. Kind of close again because I don't know if my pens will write over all of these um, stickers. But you can put them in anywhere. And then you're all ready to go with another list. We could add a title up here. We could even just write a title in depending on you know what you're doing. So I th think these lists hopefully will be uh, really useful for you to sort of fill out your bullet journals. Okay, now here comes some of the really fun stuff. <laughs> some of the decoration that I love to do. And this I will probably do throughout while I'm using it. Um, but sometimes I like to have it set up ahead of time. So I'm going to show you how I add flips. I did this in the video where I made this, but in case you weren't along, I'll show you how to do it here real quick because it's really easy. And all you do is you cut a piece of paper. Um, this is a great time to use up your scraps or leftover scrapbook paper that maybe you didn't find, you know, a project for or something. Um, I cut it down to the same height as the paper that you're putting it on so they match in height and just grab some washi tape. Now the width, you need to be sure the width is um, smaller than the full width of the page because you don't want your flip to get stuck on your rings. So this one, I think I just cut down to four and three quarters. So my total width here is five and a half. I cut this down to four and three quarters wide and eight and a half tall. So all you're gonna do is I like to find some contrasting, matching, whatever you like kind of um, washi tape. And then I just take a bunch. I try to put it about halfway um, on my paper and I try to get it even, but I also don't beat myself up about it if I don't get it even <laughs> because that's hard for me. Okay, so then I just kind of make sure it's nice and pressed down. And if your washi tape doesn't um, stick real well, you can always take a little bit of glue stick to add it um, onto there so that it'll stick a little bit better. So then once you have that on, then all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the paper that you're attaching it to to make your flip, and you're gonna line it up top and bottom, and you're gonna give it a teeny tiny gap. Doesn't have to be real big at all but you want maybe a little bit in there and then just take any of the ends that you have on your tape and fold them over. And then the other thing that I usually like to do is tape the other side as well. So I'm just gonna flip this over so you can see better on the camera. It makes it a little bit high, but I think we can, I think we can figure it out here. So I'm just gonna put this on here. I'm gonna try and line it up. 
with the two sides. And because this one's kind of close to the end, I think I'll cut it, but you don't have to do that. I am certainly not that precise all the time. And I made a little bit of a wrinkle there. But then once again, you just press it down. So let me flip it the other way now so I can get this flat. And I'm just gonna make sure my tape is really pressed down well. And then you can see I have things flying everywhere. <laughs> I have this great flap. And as I, you know, close my book, obviously this will start to stay down a little bit. But I love having flaps, having some little places to have some um, text in there, maybe, you know, hidden journaling or whatever. But I love adding flips um, throughout my journal as I go. Next up, a fun thing to add to a spiral bound notebook is envelopes. So you can never have, or okay, maybe it's just me, but I can never have <laughs> too many pockets or places to tuck things. So I made this envelope from scrapbook paper, but you could use any envelope as long as, once again, it's not wider than the width of your, um, your paper in your journal. So yeah, you need to be sure of that. Now, the other thing that I've done, I made it up from scrapbook paper and I added some washi tape to the bottom end to give it a little bit of stabilization for when I put it in. So we're gonna attach this just like this and I'm gonna show you, because we've already bound this, how we're going to insert things like this into our journal. So, and I also pulled out a little envelope because I wanted to show you a couple of different things. So let's start with the big envelope. And um, because this one isn't as high as the paper itself, I don't really need to worry about where the um, holes are, I just need to know that there should be nine of them. So as long as I'm pretty centered on where I want, you know, the holes in here, so I know I need to be, you know, about an inch or so from either end, then I know it will be centered okay. So I'm gonna be using my Zutter again, but I'm gonna show you if you already have a ring bound um, journal, how you can add things to your journal without having, you know, a binding machine like this that I have. So let me start with this. So at first I'm just going to make some holes here. And I need to have nine of them. So I think that's nine. Let me just line that up and see. Yep, that's nine. And you can see I wasn't exactly in the middle but I'm, it's close enough, so I'm good with that. So then how do we get this in there? So what I like to do is just take my scissors and cut a little snip in each of the holes that I made. And this is why I like to have some you know, sturdiness to it. Now this one, so I like to call these things, you know, the removables that you could, take in and, and take out. Now envelopes, you might not wanna move around too much, but you certainly could. So you can see now I have an envelope in my journal and I can put things in here. I could even add um, a little flap or um, a tuck so that this wouldn't come open if I wanted to, um, to make sure things stay in there. But I love being able to add additional things. Once again, this is a junk journal style to me, having envelopes in here to do things with that. Now, if you have a bullet journal that's a, or a, any kind of journal that's spiral bound and you wanted to add things to it but you don't have the binding machine, you can do that as well. So let me show you how to do that. Let me move this out of the way. And I'm gonna also show you, I'm gonna flip to another page here just so we kind of have a, a clean slate to work from. So I have this small little envelope. Now you can see there's no way I'm gonna get nine holes in here for that to work. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, just move this up so that the bottom two holes don't hit that. And you could do that down at the bottom. And as long as, and you could center it in the middle if you wanted to, you would just need to be sure that your ends don't um, hit the, hole above or hole below um, where it is on the paper. Because if it does, then it's gonna rub these rings and it's just gonna cause you problems probably when you're flipping it over back and forth and things like that. Which is why I am going to move mine up a little bit. Actually, I think I'm gonna move it up just like this so that my bottom two rings aren't even gonna affect this. Now what I'm gonna do is actually the first thing you should do is you should measure how far your holes are from the edge of 
the paper. So when I measure mine, now I did these um, all by myself. So <laughs> I know that they're about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the paper. So the holes that I'm gonna be making, I wanna make no more than a quarter of an inch from the edge of the paper as well. So make sure you measure that to see what yours is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my envelope or whatever I'm putting in here. Oop, that's too much lead. And then all I'm gonna do is in the middle of each hole, I'm gonna make a little mark. And we can come back and erase these after we're done. But I need to know where to punch my holes. So I have those lines on there now. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I am gonna make a little mark for my quarter of an inch line um, up and down so that I know where to punch these holes when we're ready to punch them. So I'm just gonna do a light little line like that. So you can see I have a, a vertical line here and then I have these little lines. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a regular standard hole punch and I'm going to punch at each of those lines on my quarter inch line. And now I'm just gonna, I'm trying to be as exact as I can, but I'm not always good at that. All right, so now we have our holes and we do the same thing. You have your holes in there. And actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna erase my marks. So there's no evidence that we tried so hard to get this into our journal. <laughs> okay. So now once again, I'm just gonna snip from the end into the hole to make this accessible. And that one I didn't quite do even, but that's okay. So then all you do is just very carefully push all of your ends around your rings. And I think I must have gotten one off because it feels a little feels a little funky. I don't think I, I don't think I was exactly even with my holes, but you can see it's still in there. I can still move this around and I can still open this up and add little things to this if I want. And that's fun. And the, the other thing that I love about doing this is that I can remove it. So if I don't want it there, or if I want to take it out and write something on it and put it back in, I can do that too. So add some envelopes to your bullet journal. Next up, let's make a bookmark or a today marker. I don't know if you've seen those in planners, but it's a, a kind of like a bookmark that you can remove and you can put in different places so you kind of know where you are in your journal. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm using some scrapbook paper that I had left over. And what I'm going to do first, since this is a full sheet, is I'm just going to decide um, how wide I want my bookmark. And I don't want it, I don't want it real wide. I'm thinking... A little bit wider than that. Let's see. Let's see what three inches look like. Actually, I think that looks nice. So about three inches I'm cutting here. And then I get to decide how long I want it to be. Now, you could do it the length of the page. So just flip to an open page here or well, whatever. Okay. Yeah. You could do a bookmark that is completely the size of the book, but you don't have to. So what I do recommend though, is if you have um, the, your ring binder in the middle, your rings in the middle, that you at least try to cover all of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of guesstimate what I want. So this is how we're going to do it. So I don't, let me go to a page that is the right, the same height here. Okay, so if I have my bookmark, I want it to go over all of my rings and I want it to stick out about, I don't know, an inch or an inch and a half. So this is about where I wanna cut this off. So I'm just gonna kind of mark that with my finger and cut that off. And we can always change the size later if we want to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my punch board here for tabs. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to punch my tabs on either side of this little tag I made. So now I have the top 
looking like what I want it to look like. And when I grab my binder now, grab my journal, don't need this anymore, I can see that I can I can figure out, okay, where do I want this? You know, how much do I want to stick out here? And then we're basically gonna do the same thing we did for adding an envelope or, or anything like that, is you're gonna make some marks so that you kind of know where your holes need to be. And actually for, because I'm gonna be using my um, punching tool, I really only need to punch the first one or I need to figure out where the first one should go because the rest of them will fall in line. If you're using a hole punch on your own, then you're gonna to have to mark all the holes. So here's the, the first hole that I want to go right there so that it will be high enough to stick out of my journal. So now I'm lining that up with my first hole here. And then I know I need to punch three more holes, so I have to line that up to get my nine holes. And then this should line up how I want it. Get rid of my pencil mark. And then once again, I'm going to try to punch, or I'm sorry, to cut <laughs> in the middle, because I know when I was doing that envelope, I cut on the side, and I think that's why it's a little bit wonky. Okay, so now I have, my, I have my slices in here and I can very easily just tuck this in to my journal. And I love this because then I can, I know where I am, I can very easily open my you know, day up to that page. And the great thing about it is that you have to be gentle, but you can pull it out too. So if you kind of just gently pull it out, you can reuse it. Now, the other thing that you should know is that this is another good place to add washi tape. So if you want some additional reinforcement, you can add some washi tape on the side of this or even all around it if you wanted to. Um, you could even make this, you know, um, double cardstock. You could kind of make it like a, you know, a regular junk journal tag. You could add some layers to it to give it a little bit more sturdiness. You can see probably even now that I've pulled it out a couple times, it is starting to bend these papers. And once they bend too much, it's not going to hold the rings very well. So for something like this that I know I'm going to be um, taking in and out a lot, I will definitely add some reinforcement to that. Yep, you guessed it. If you can do a tall tab, you can also do a wide tab. So I'm gonna show you how to do that one real quick too. And I just grabbed another piece of cardstock. Maybe I'll put it this way so it's not so shiny. But it's the principle is the same. It's just that you're gonna measure you know, in opposite directions. So for this one, I want it to be as wide as the page so that I can um, put my holes in. And then I want it to go past about an inch or so, once again to have that tab. So I'm going to mark this approximately. Now this one, the, the only thing about this one is that you have to be a little bit careful before you punch your holes because if it's too long and you decide that you want less coming out, then we could have a problem. So let me show you what I mean. So, okay, so I have my width. That's about how long I want it. Um, I need to do the height. And once again, I think I'm going to try to encompass all of the uh, rings here. So I'm just going to mark right here. I want it to maybe go about a half an inch on either side for my width. So it's going to be like this. And once again, let me try and do it like this so it's hopefully not shining. But I'm going to make my tab first before I cut any holes so I can kind of measure again before I put the holes in. So I want these to be the words to be right side up. So I need to be sure I'm putting my tab on the right um, side of the paper. So I want my tab up here and I'm just going to punch on either side. I don't have to measure tabs at all. Okay. So now before I punch the holes here, I just want to measure that my tab is sticking out as much as I want. If it was sticking out too much, um, we might need to cut it down. Like if I'm measuring from this side, 
if it was sticking out too much, I would want to pull it back to where I want it to stick out and then I would trim off this end before I punched my holes. So that's the one thing you got to be careful of when you're doing a side tab. But when I line this up with the end of my paper, it's sticking out about as much as I want. Actually, I could probably take off a little bit. I think I might. I think I might take off like an eighth of an inch or so just to be sure that not too much is sticking out because then it'll probably get bent and caught on everything. So, oops, I got to measure from the, I'm like, why is it sticking out even more? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> now I can punch my holes. And once again, I'm going to be using my little zutter machine here, but you could do this uh, the way that I taught you. So for me, I'm just going to mark the first hole where I want that one. Let me just make sure I got that right. Okay. Move that guy out of the way. Okay. So now we have our side tab. You guessed it. I'm snipping away here. And sometimes what I do, once again, I didn't put washi tape on this, but sometimes you can go back and do it after too. You know, you can just layer up some washi tape to put on here to strengthen up these little pieces if you're moving it around a bunch. But right now, I and I love how this adds some color <laughs> to what you're doing. So, but it also is nice because you can see, okay, this is where I am or this is where I'm working. And so you have this little tab and this could even be another piece of paper for you to write on or make a list on or something like that. But I can also gently pull it out and move it around into another place inside of my journal. So I love these little um, pull out pieces. It makes me definitely think more of a junk journal than um, a bullet journal, but I love being able to do that so that I can customize it to the way that I want to have it. And one more thing that I wanted to mention is that this is a great time to use up um, cards. If you have cards that you've been saving that you love the front of, the saying, they have pictures on them that you really like, this is a great time to be able to put them in so that you can be inspired as you are using your planner. So I have this one. I think I, um, I think I got this from an, when, with an order that I um, had gotten <laughs> and it says you are great. So I just thought that would be a great <laughs> something to have in here to inspire me, to make me feel like I'm getting some affirmation from me to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I like having little cards in there. Sometimes I put birthday cards, funny birthday cards in from friends and things like that uh, inside my journal as well. And there you go. My um, bullet journal is all set up and ready for me to start using. And I am so excited to start using it. I have my index ready to go. I have my month ready to go. I have some lists started here and there so that I can start putting things in there as well. I have my month overview here, and then I've added some fun things so that I can separate my pages. This maybe gives me a separate section in my journal. If I was taking a class or something, I would maybe you know keep all my notes back here or something like that if I wanted to. And we also added fun envelopes and different things to our journal that weren't there in the beginning. So I hope you enjoyed this video, friends. I hope that this inspires you to do some bullet journaling in the junk journal style. Let me know down below if you'd like to see more of this or if you'd like to see some completed pages or something that like that. I'd love to know what you'd like to see in the planner bullet journal uh, realm. So thanks so much for watching, friends. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.